Welcome to this sequence devoted to higher ed, how higher ed education was impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. We're talking about tomorrow and the new way of thinking in education and especially among the community, governance, students, teachers, and of course, company. Uh, uh, and to talk about all this, uh, we are uh, with me to discuss today. Here, my guest, uh, Laurent Champagne, General Manager, Arts et Métiers, and Vice President of the Conference of the Grand, of Grandes Écoles, Conference des Grandes Écoles, je faisais un mix, um, a kind of professional union for the Grandes Écoles, which is a typical French uh, specialty to have university and Grandes Écoles. Arts et Métiers is a Grande Écoles, as, as I said, which is a, which is a typically French naming, we are talking about French excellence. Uh, Patrick Doffmont, Head of Transmission Institute, Compagnon du Devoir et du Tour de France. We are talking about the French savoir-faire. Uh, thanks to the Compagnon du Devoir, our best craftsman or train. Pierre Levi, Assistant Professor at the Department of Industrial Design and Eidhoven, University of Technology and Co-Founder of European Consight Group. And Lady Shan Prime, I see you have a beautiful, a very cute dog. <laughs> you do. So I, I'm quite sure it's, it, it's good. Deputy Director of the Institute of, for Creative and Cultural Entrepreneurship, Goldsmiths University of London and Academic Lead Enterprise. Is that it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, we speak a little bit French. Uh, pour celles et ceux qui nous écoutent, nous allons également un peu parler français. Patrick Dauphémont, je vous le disais, c'est le, le patron des Compagnons du Devoir et il va nous parler de, de, des Compagnons du Devoir qui est vraiment, je vous le disais, une spécialité made in France, si je puis dire. Et, et il va commencer notre débat en nous disant euh, qu'est-ce qui a changé dans le monde de l'éducation, quel est le nouveau paradigme auquel nous devons faire face aujourd'hui euh, avec la crise du Covid-19 que nous connaissons, alors plusieurs mots-clés, hein, le digital, comment cela, ça, ça, est-ce que c'est est impacté, le, le suivi des étudiants, le, le mode projet, plein de choses qui sont apparues. Patrick, c'est à vous. Merci, euh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Donc, euh, brièvement, les compagnons, c'est un, un organisme, enfin, c'est une organisation ouvrière, hein, on forme aux métiers euh, artisanaux principalement, et euh, qui est très vieille, c'est une très vieille institution en France, dont le let motive est de permettre à chaque euh, ouvrier de s'accomplir dans la vie, s'accomplir et de s'épanouir. Pour ça, on s'appuie sur quatre piliers. Le premier, c'est le métier, et c'est le premier support pour, euh, à travers lequel l'ouvrier le, 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 va pouvoir s'accomplir. Le deuxième, c'est le voyage. Le fait de, pendant cinq à huit ans de voyage, le jeune va renouveler les expériences dans différentes entreprises, dans différentes régions, dans différents pays. Pour, pour avoir un maximum d'expériences professionnelles vécues. Et le quatrième, c'est la communauté. Les jeunes se rassemblent dans des communautés, dans, de, dans les villes, dans les différentes villes de France notamment, et euh, vont vivre en communauté. Donc, ils font tourner eux-mêmes la maison, ils font tourner la communauté, donc ils sont autonomes aussi sur ces sujets-là. Et c'est les anciens, donc ceux qui ont fini le Tour de France, qui viennent apporter euh, le soutien et l'accompagnement nécessaire. Et le dernier pilier, c'est l'initiation, c'est la partie un peu philosophique du compagnonnage, ce qu'on appelle nos valeurs, qui euh, c'est un peu un résumé des, des, des grands philosophes euh, de notre culture judéo-chrétienne en fait. L'objectif, c'était de livrer une synthèse de, de, des philosophies judéo-chrétiennes au monde ouvrier. Au départ, c'est ça, donc voilà, on, on se nourrit de ça. Donc, euh, Merci pour la présentation du compagnonnage. L'impact du Covid sur nos manières de faire, il a eu deux, deux vitesses en fait. Le premier confinement, il y a eu une certaine, une certaine motivation à, à, à rentrer dans le dur, à, à faire euh, malgré les, 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 les problématiques. Donc il y a eu un, un vrai soutien, une solidarité dans l'effort. On a tout passé en distanciel dans la, en 15 jours. On avait réussi à tout passer en distanciel, mais on a fait que transformer du présentiel en distanciel. Les retours étaient plutôt positifs parce qu'on a surfé sur, sur justement cette énergie due à l'effort de fournir ensemble. Et puis, le deuxième confinement a été beaucoup plus problématique en fait, parce que là, ce qui ressortait, c'était plus des problèmes techniques, c'était plutôt des problèmes humains. Le, 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 le... Quand on transforme le présentiel en, en distanciel, donc ça nous oblige à repenser 
le modèle numérique également, il est pas, il est, il est très intéressant le modèle numérique. Le, toute la partie FOAD qu'on peut apporter dans la formation est très intéressante. Par contre, il faut vraiment veiller à ne pas transformer du présentiel en distanciel parce que ça, ça marche pas. Donc, il faut tout repenser dans sa globalité entre euh, ce qui peut se passer en entreprise, ce qui doit être apporté en centre de formation et ce qui peut être nourri par le numérique entre les deux. Voilà, je ne sais pas si je réponds bien à la question. We used to speak French together, but now we, we speak English, as you yes. know, because we have lots of friends coming from UK uh, okay. all over the world, listening to us. So, Laurent, first question in English, if you want. Uh, I'm so sorry for the technical problem that we had, but now it seems to be over. We have, we, um, what has changed from your point of view in education with the new paradigm? Being associated with the pandemic, and you talk about uh, the new mindset in uh, higher ed. Several keywords: uh, distance, digital, individualization, monitoring, uh, project mode. All this uh, new issue for you. And what is your point of view? Uh, thank you, Gilbert. Hi, everyone. Uh, just a few words about uh, Arze Métier. Uh, Arze Métier is one of the oldest uh, school of engineering. In, in France, and we train engineers for the industry in the fields of uh, manufacturing engineering, mechanical engineering, industrial engineering, energy engineering, uh, with very strong scientific uh, skills, uh, very strong technological skills, uh, which means that uh, we have a lot of practical uh, uh, um, training uh, in our programs with a lot of hands-on applications on, on real industrial machines and also strong human skills uh, because our engineers are the one who will transform the industry into the industry 4.0 and they need to lead the people in the industry to change the way they do. So uh, during the pandemic, uh, something was quite critical for us is what that was how to continue a practical training uh, from from anywhere uh, and transform it to a distance learning it was not possible for us to transform all all the programs into a virtual program um, our, our uh, faculties were very very clever and uh, um, they they were able to transform some parts of the practical training into into distance training but for us uh, the great change uh, after this period is is uh, hybrid ed hybrid education how do we how can we mix um, practical training uh, on our campuses with distance learning um, we think that uh, we, we cannot, as I said, and we don't want to transform all our training into distance training, also because uh, our engineers will go and work into companies, uh, and in those companies, they will have a mixed situation of, of presence in the company, uh, in the workshops, and also a distance, distance work. So we have to train them to be able to work with their teams uh, from their home uh, on, on distance work, but we also have to train them to work in the workshops. And for us, uh, it's a great acceleration of the digitalization of our, of our uh, learning platforms. So that, that's the, 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 two, the two key words are hybrid education and digitalization. So can you hear me, Sean? You hear me? I hear you. Yes, I hear yes, you. Yes, great. Is the dog with you? Still with you? <laughs> He's wandering around. So I think this is one of the biggest changes about working from home. He, he, he looked happy, Sean. <laughs> he was. Uh, so, he... <laughs> as you as you understand, you will answer uh, in your specific field, arts and culture, Sean. Um, Laurent, as we see, uh, engineering. Patrick, craftsmanship, and Pierre, as we see in a few moments, design. So, Sean, what uh, has changed uh, in education uh, with the, this new paradigm that we spoke a few months ago with Laurent? Yes. So, uh, 
so Goldsmiths only teaches arts, designs, humanities, and social sciences. So there are some crossovers, I think, to some of the issues that Laurent mentioned. Uh, one of the biggest changes, of course, is that you see my house and you see my dog. So there's, um, there's a real thing, I think, in terms of intimacy between teaching from home and teaching to students at home. And uh, I think that's positive, but I think that there are that with that comes some changes in terms of status and um, accessibility. So I think that the hybrid model is going to be here with us for a long while. Um, but how we actually do the, 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 the hands-on teaching, the craftsmanship is complex. One of the things that our students have said to us, though, is that um, they want us to be more mindful in our teaching uh, of um, sustainability and of the environment there's a lot of thinking that students are doing around how we can ensure that our curriculum prepares them to 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 be able to contribute in a less damaging way so the change for us in pedagogy is we are um speaking much more on a flat level rather than expert to student and we are also even more focused on the future um, and on developing our students in terms of resilience and in terms of anti-fragility. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Pierre, are you here? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm wondering. Can you hear you me? Know... Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can okay. hear you. Uh, I can hear you, and I'm very happy. Uh, so you are in uh, Ireland right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. How is the weather? <laughs> uh, sunny these days. Very sunny, which is surprising, but. <laughs> but it's fine. Paris, it's raining. Uh, so it's the same question for you. What has changed? What are the big change uh, now today? In, uh, in the new world? So, so for us, our education is already very uh, project based. No? So uh, uh, students have already uh, uh, sort of a form of autonomy in the in the way they in the way they work. Uh, what has changed very much with the COVID is uh, the isolation of students, I think, first, because they were meeting much less. So what we have been working on, this has been said already by Laurent or Patrick uh, or Jan on digitalization and things like that, is to try to get them to work more, to, to keep on, them on working together. So to have a lot of peer-to-peer uh, -peer work and things like that. So it has been really much for us and for them, I think, a new way of looking for new resources for their education. And I think that for me, the key word is to look for new new, uh, new resources, new ways of learning and new ways then for, therefore, of uh, the use of, uh, of, of the course. So we now are a lot uh, working on how they can work to with each other on the project. Uh, having, I don't know, online resources, like think about YouTube class, uh, courses on YouTube or whatever you have on the internet, right? To, uh, to uh, gain some knowledge and have the time when we meet on, on the distance, on the screens, as we do now, to actually discuss what they have learned and discuss and get them to be more critical of what they, what they have done or what they have learned. And it creates very much a new way of, uh, of dealing as a teacher about what we actually teach them. We don't teach them knowledge, we help them to be critical to the knowledge they have learned somewhere else. That's for me the, the, then, the big change, change in, uh, in the there past is a, uh, years. There is a word very important in your, in your mind, is the peer-to-peer. -peer. It, me, it yes. means that we can exchange between students, between professors and all the community. And this uh, relationship, this new, uh, this, this accelerate, acceleration of relationship are very important from, from, for you. Yes, it's very important. As first, uh, uh, it keeps them uh, sane huh, in, in head to be here with some people and to not to be too much alone and not to be too much alone on their own thing, but really to have the chance to meet each other. Also know that some students have some means, for example, some skills or some machines that others don't have, uh, 3D printers, huh, for example, um, that we use a lot. And then we they are able to go to each other's place when the university is closed, which has been for a few uh, a few times uh, during the, the 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 last period. And therefore, they also meet and feel that they are together in learning these things. And I think it's 
both uh, uh, a new way of looking for resources, as I said before, but also a new way of, of collaboration, a new way of you know working together to learn what they need to learn. And I think that has been very positive for, for our students and for the future of our students as well. One point very important is the, the, the position, the statute of the teachers and the professors in university, especially the professor in university, uh, the, the method, the pedagogy are now changing very fast and you, universities and especially uh, professors have to change their posture uh, and the teacher as well, of course. So in which way they have to change the, the state of mind, um, Laurent? There are a lot, a lot of things to change and that's, that, that's quite a challenge for them. There are many issues um, because um, uh, distance, distance, Distant learning or hybrid learning is not the same thing than, than, than presence learning. Uh, you, you don't have to just uh, show your PowerPoint to the, to the students uh, using uh, Teams or Zoom. Um, you have to build new uh, scenarios of, 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 uh, of education and that's, that's quite a challenge. And the um, second challenge for me is that um, uh, professors who are used to to work uh, uh, with students in that room from uh, 10 to 12, they now have to interact with students at any time of the day and of the night also because they are they are young, and that's quite challenging to 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 be very good in in that way of interact with with young people. And, and uh, as I said, for our professors, they, they also have to, to think about a new, uh, new uh, pedagogical uh, scenarios with, with presence and distance learning, uh, interaction between, between machines, uh, real machines and virtual machines using data. So there are a lot of things to do. We, we we had a step further during the, the the pandemic, but there's still a lot a lot to do, and, uh, and uh, we don't you, we don't yeah. Uh, you just tell us that uh, the professor will work very much more <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yes, yes, and um, and in France, uh, Arzemetia is a public institution. And uh, the, the number of working hours of, of teachers is based on, on presence. That's the number mm -hmm. of hours. Um, we say face-to-face um, um, uh, -face pedagogy. So, that, so we also have to change the way we, we, we count the, the time they use for, for that. Uh, I think that that's, uh, that will be more work for them um uh, and uh, and uh, you know that uh, uh, young people are, are very good at interacting with their phones at any day of, of the day <laughs> on, uh, at any time of any day time. And, and that, yes any time and that's that's very challenging and john pierre tell us uh this is uh, i think for university in art, in design, in economics, in uh, engineering, it's a big deal how to, to move, move on, to change the state of mind of the professor that have to, to change the way they are practicing their job now today. Chan. Yeah, I think it is, it's difficult because I think um, students had looked to, to us as professors to, uh, to have knowledge, to have wisdom, and right now, I think uh, it's quite, it's a very disabling time for all of us. Um, there's so much that all of us don't know. So the, the change in terms of status is huge. Um, and the, the change in the way that we respond to questions is, is massive. I absolutely agree yeah. with Laurent about the, the change in our hours that we work and our accessibility. I think one of the things that we have really struggled to develop in this new pedagogical framework is ways for accidental meetings and accidental creativity. The casual conversations that you would have on campus, there's no way to replace that online. Everything is very intentional. 
but that brings with it some strong structures. So I think us being able to learn new ways of improvising within these strong structures is going to be our next wave of pedagogical concern. Um, I think what's interesting is that I had expected uh, students to be perhaps more adept with the technology we're using than they are, but of course they're using their own technology. So I think that there is this kind of uh, even space on Teams and Zoom where we, we are all more even in terms of the way that we're working. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you feel there is a, a kind of resistance among the professors to change? No, I think um, the ones that are, that I know, uh, no. I mean, it was, <laughs> we, we had, I mean, maybe that's lucky. Um, I, I think what we are finding is that we are having to, and it's a good thing, we're re-examining all of our material because what can you put into a recorded lecture and then how do you convert into the live discussion period? So I think it's been an interesting period for us to review all of our material, um, mm -hmm. not only how we deliver it, but but is it the right thing to be delivered now? Um, mm -hmm. what, what is different about face-to-face -face live like this as opposed to listening to a recording of me? When should I use both? Mm. So yeah, we're, we're definitely learning new ways of teaching for sure. You're still learning, even if you are the big professor <laughs> who knew everything. Well, I think I think it becomes a problem when you uh, when you won't learn. <laughs> I think that's when you should stop. But yeah, this this year has definitely been uh, a very harsh year for us uh, uh, in terms of thinking about how we deliver our teaching. Um, I think that the, the key thing has been uh, around delivering critical thinking and critical examination rather than um, standing and delivering a, a two-hour non-stop lecture. Actually engaging with students to develop their criticality has been the, 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 mm. the largest thing that we, 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 need, we now need to do. To address. Okay. Uh, Pierre, uh, same question for you. Yes. Uh, I, I, It seems to me that it, it, the main change is about uh, the, the organization the, of professor pedagogy. Yes, the, uh, I mean I'm, I'm I'm completely following what Sean was saying huh, on this idea of uh, uh, trying to bring a bit more criticality in our teaching. Um, and there's one thing also that I experience a lot, and I do hope that in the coming months it will disappear progressively, but still it's still very present. Is that I saw myself very much now, and some of my colleagues as well, as the front line, I must say, with the students. So the students are the first people they are speaking with. Uh, we are the first people the students are speaking with. And I saw myself to be, I wouldn't say a psychologist, but nearly. I mean, uh, some of the, some of the meet, most of the meetings I have with students uh, online start with, how are you doing? It's not at all about the content. It's about to make sure that students are still doing fine. And sometimes we are not so much doing fine either, but we have to hide that a bit. Um, but really much that there is much more concern about the health and the well-being of our students. And I think that is a shift really much compared to what was before, because before it was really much uh, within the university, you could see what was going on and students could help each other in a way or another. And there were also some uh, psycho uh, university psychologists, for example, who could uh, reach them quickly out. And this is much, uh, much more difficult now. So we are the front line. And I think this has changed a lot my way of relating to students. And mm -hmm. in the teaching itself, uh, as uh, Shans was saying, huh, there is this idea of uh, 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 teaching them to be more critical. And also because they are much more uh, online than we are, I mean, they are spend a lot of time online indeed. We also hope that they look for resources and knowledge themselves mm -hmm. online. So there's this idea that I like very much is the idea of learning to learn. So I think our position has been much more to teach them or to accompany them into um, uh, a learning on their own. So this you idea coach. of learning to learn. I coach them much we more than I teach yeah. them, I guess so, yes. Yeah. A kind of coaching. Yes. You know, we have so many coach to, to, today, so. Uh, Patrick, uh, I speak French, sorry for Patrick. And uh, dites-nous un mot sur ce qui a changé, parce que on le voit, hein, tout le monde a dit, les enseignants ont dû changer de posture aussi pour s'adapter et euh, transformer leur méthode d'apprentissage des étudiants. Qu'en pensez-vous bah, 
Oui, effectivement, on s'est adapté. Euh, comme je vous le disais, on a transformé le présentiel en distanciel. Ça, c'était pour le gros du flow. Par contre, et ce qui est intéressant, c'est une expérimentation qu'on mène depuis 2-3 ans maintenant, qu'on appelle euh, l'API, euh, qui est l'apprentissage par immersion en entreprise. Et, euh, et c'est le modèle qui a le mieux tenu pendant tous les confinements, qu'on a, enfin les différents confinements qu'on a vécu. Et ce modèle-là remet l'entreprise au, au cœur même de l'apprentissage. Euh, on diminue drastiquement le, le nombre de stages de regroupement en centre de formation. L'essentiel de la formation se fait en entreprise. Par contre, il, le formateur va passer une journée par mois dans chaque entreprise de chaque jeune. Il va passer la journée avec lui de manière à, à, à apporter la partie ressources, partie théorique ou, ou geste pratique dont euh, le, le, l'entreprise a besoin sur le geste technique à ce moment-là. Et, euh, et là, le numérique est assez intéressant également parce que ça leur permet de garder du lien entre deux stages qui sont très éloignés et de quand même fédérer à travers des missions à réaliser en groupe avec leurs jeunes, enfin avec les, les apprenants, qui euh, le font en plus de l'entreprise, soit qui le font le, le soir ou le samedi. Et euh, c'est le modèle qui a le mieux tenu et qui, qui est encore perfectible, mais qui est assez intéressant quand même. Est-ce que, euh, Patrick, vous avez le sentiment qu'il y a, il y a, ils sont au cœur de la machine, les enseignants C'est le plus important finalement, puisque eux, ils vont s'adapter, se transformer. C'est là qu'il faut progresser le plus, parce qu'au au fond, les machines, c'est des machines. Le digital, ce ne sont que des investissements. Et au fond, le professeur reste au cœur de la machine, il doit s'adapter. Bah, c'est surtout une question de posture. Est-ce qu'aujourd'hui, euh, il doit rester professeur ou il doit être euh, animateur J'entends par animateur au sens propre hein, du, de, de l'étymologie du mot, quoi. celui qui donne vie, celui qui anime l'âme. Et euh, les jeunes euh, arrivent dans les métiers avec, euh, s'ils sont entraînés dans une dynamique d'apprendre, il, il faut, les, les, enfin, faut surtout être là pour leur apporter tout ce qui est nécessaire à leur apprentissage plutôt que de, de, de gaver des oies. Quoi. Mmh. C'est eux qui sont maîtres de leur apprentissage et il faut leur insuffler cette énergie-là. D'accord. Ok, thank you. Another question for all my guests. Um, I, I, want to, I want to know if it's possible uh, what you think about the search of purpose that we speak a lot today in newspaper, in, in TV, and media, impact the need of uh, to feel useful and here uh, this, this is the point of fundamental uh, elements we are talking in education. Uh, do you feel that in your uh, university, Laurent? Um, I, I think that yes, um, uh, our students are uh, seeking purpose in what we do with them and what they will do in the company um, when they will uh, graduate and uh, uh, they have uh, more and more questions about purpose, about values. Uh, I think we will talk uh, later on on, on um, environmental um, issues uh, and uh, it's um, in fact we see that uh, they They don't want um, uh, distance-only learning anymore. It's it's it was too much during the last few months. So uh, they want to see us. They want to be with us, and uh, they want to talk about purpose and and, and values. And um, I think that it's quite challenging for the companies who will hire those this generation because. Um, uh, They will have to give them answer about the values of the company, about the purpose of the job. Um, in, in our ZMT students, uh, as I said, m- most of them will work in the industry. Most of them will work in, in produ- production. And uh, there are still many jobs uh, uh, who are uh, with, with presence On, on the on the workshop on the floor and um, uh, they still they still have some choice in the jobs and they they want the company to give some purpose in the job responsible impact this is this is the word uh, very important for the new generation the word of tomorrow Sean what do you think about this 
So uh, many of the students that I work with are going to form their own business. Oh, you changed the, the, your place. I've changed my background. <laughs> I know, I managed to get the dog to settle. <laughs> now I'm back on my more formal background. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I think uh, forget purpose. It's adaptation isn't yeah. it, at the moment always. But um, purpose is massively important. And uh, the majority of students that I work with are going to form their own enterprise. They're very clear of the impact they want to make on society. Um, and I think this is uh, really positive. And I think, again, this comes with us then working together with them. Um, and it comes back to that, that flattening of status is how do we give them the right tools for them to achieve that purpose? I think a lot of the frustration comes when they try to enter employment or start their own business when they don't have the um the right tools the right uh skills to be able to enact what they see as their purpose um, but yeah i think we are very much uh working with generations of people and most of the students i work with are in their 20s but some are older where uh, up to 50s um but that notion of self-actualization, they definitely come with very clear sets of values and they want us to provide them with the um, frameworks that will help them achieve their ambitions. But they're quite mm -hmm. selfless, yeah. which is wonderful. It's not a mode, it's a strong feeling. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that brings quite a collaborative way of working together with them. I think yeah, what do you... What do you think about this? Yes, I, I think it's also uh, here a very, um, very major topic nowadays with our students. Uh, I don't think there's much left student left in our faculty who is who are not uh, who do not look for a purpose in what they do. I, I do believe even that many of the students uh, are not studying design because they want to study design per se. They're studying design because they saw in the where we teach or what the topic we address in design that it is a place where they might find these uh, ways and skills and tools to be able to address this this purpose so it becomes first for them i think and 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 we see that more and more and whether after they enter a company or they create their own company it is really much the the lead is really much the purpose they are looking uh, into and it's often very clear for them it will be either climate change it's going to be a mo mobility energy and mobility it's going to be a, a city reorganization it might be very much different topics but they are very i think they are much more focused than five ten years ago and i think the covid situation we are in now is amplifying the movement and amplifying the importance of this topic you just uh, said the word entrepreneurship it, this is the answer for the new generation it is yeah. an alternative, I believe. Um, uh, it is a possibility. I think they see entrepreneurship in a very different manner than we used to, and I think is uh, this is uh, this is going better than it used to be. Actually, the way I see it now, the way I see it with uh, some of the students that are really uh, uh, looking into entrepreneurship, is that first they see it as the possibility to indeed start their activity based on the purpose they have. So I have this sort of autonomy to explore this purpose and go further. But also for so many of them, it is that, you know, they are young, they can risk, they can fail, and they know they can. First, because many of them have other parents or people around to, to support them a bit, for many of them. But still, uh, I mean, they have nothing so much to lose, but they have a, le a lot to learn. Because when you start your own company, you learn financial aspect, you learn marketing aspect and all the things. So they know that this is a moment to to go on. And I like really much this idea that the, the entrepreneurship is also a, a continuation from, for education as it, at the same time a, a first act in the professional environment for the purpose they have. So for them, it's really a, a, a very nice uh, alternative to being hired in a in a company uh, uh, that they used yeah. they used to look for before. You, you know how you, we used to call friends the startup nation. So <laughs> I'm enjoy. I'm happy when you uh, when you speak about entrepreneurship because I think that the new generation is very involved in this kind of new yeah. strategy, personal strategy. You know, just as okay. a very brief, as a, as a, I would say that half of our students in a, in a design in Eidhoven have their own company as a students already. And they do little stuff, but they already start to look for 
what it can become after they, they graduate. So it's really mm -hmm. something that they, 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 they look forward. It's very strong, but we, we saw the scenario uh, before the, the, the previous conference. Uh, we, we were speaking about entrepreneurship and uh, how to, the, to deal with a new way of living, new way of working. Uh, we have five minutes, five minutes to discuss uh, a little bit more. Patrick, uh, la quête de sens, uh, l'impact, est-ce que les étudiants le ressentent aussi chez les compagnies du de devoir? <sighs> La quête de sens chez les compagnons, c'est un peu le moteur de, de, du mouvement, en fait. C'est là où vient toute la partie initiatique, euh, la, la partie un peu philosophique de, de, dans notre manière de transmettre. Il n'y a rien qui peut... Est-ce est que l'homme peut s'épanouir sans, sans mettre un sens à ce qu'il fait, quoi, sans mettre un sens dans ce qu'il fait Le but des compagnons, c'est de, de... On est dans les métiers de l'artisanat. Donc, un métier d'artisanat, par principe, c'est de servir, à, de remplir un besoin... Euh, auprès des, des, des humains. Le but du jeu, c'est que ce soit beau et agréable à utiliser et, euh, et que ça dure le plus longtemps possible. Donc, euh, la quête de sens, c'est... Chez nous, ça peut se traduire en une, en notre de, en, en une phrase, hein, c'est notre devise. Notre de, la devise des compagnons, c'est ni s'asservir, ni se servir, mais servir. Mm -hmm. Chacun y met le sens. Uh, great. Yes, I, I, I could not translate in English <laughs> because uh, not to serve, this is the end of the sentence, but uh, uh, it's a great uh, phrase. Thank you very much, Patrick. Just a few words to end this conference. and It was interesting, of course. I would like to have a key words about um, the future of work and the future of education, which is very important. Laurent, uh, what is the key words for the future for, from your point of view? Uh, for for me, it's environment. We, we, th th that's that's the big issue for us. We have students now who are very concerned with with ad, even, environmental problems. They want us to change our programs. They want us to change the way we behave in the school, and they want the company to change. Uh, and our our big issue is to make them to go in the companies where they will have a strong impact. Some of them are activists. Uh, <laughs> too much. And, and, yeah, too, too much maybe they say, uh, we don't want to take the plane for studio board. Uh, we don't want to go into this company because uh, it, it, uh, it doesn't uh, have the same, the same values that we have uh, with respect to the environment. And, challenge that is to make them understand that those company they have they have huge plans to change uh, in terms of, of carbon production and those students who are activists they have to go into these companies to change them and that's not that easy they change they could change inside thank you very much laurent uh, last words for sean and prime and of course patrick sean would you tell us what is your key words from your point of view you for the future of works in education? I think it's uh, environment, yes, sustainability, uh, criticality, resilience, and the ability to improvise. I think if we can leave our students with strong understanding of those, and if they can make us develop our skills in those, then, then we're doing well. You're optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be, don't you, when you're in lockdown? <laughs> but yeah, I think we have to be optimistic. And I think that that's what this year has taught us is uh, we have to be optimistic. We have to, if we're not open to change, it will be forced on us. So let's be collaborative and look at those changes that we can make to ensure that education remains relevant and that we develop students who will, uh, as you were just saying, Laura, who will change industry. Um, mm. It, we have to, to keep that energy and that enthusiasm as well as the skills to, to be able to do that. But and I hope that we, we have uh, students from UK in the next few, few years, in the next years, because it's very important to keep this relationship between exactly. university all over Europe, all over the world. If you see what I mean, Sean. I do. Uh, and if I would be <laughs> take the last minute of this platform to say that I think the local to global is so key and 
I know that a lot of students that I've been working with are now looking to take their master's program in mainland Europe because of mm. the decisions that were made <laughs> at the end of last year. So, <laughs> you can say the word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just a few words because we are late. Yeah, well, I, I will just uh, add to what Sean said. I think it's uh, what Sean, the key words Sean had were, were really good to that. Uh, there's really this idea of transformation. Everything will transform and continuously transforming, and I think we need to ally to it. And this idea of learning to learn or lifelong learning. I think it's also very important that we keep this idea that even when we are graduates, we still keep on learning. Patrick, a dernier mot en français. Thank you very good. Thank you very much. Sorry, Pierre. And see you soon in Paris, maybe. I, I hope, hope so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Patrick, a few words. C'est quoi le mot clé pour vous demain? Le, j'ai pas entendu. Pardon. Le mot clé? Le mot clé. Le mot clé pour demain pour nos étudiants, pour l'entreprise dans cette transformation que nous connaissons. Uh, le mot clé, je crois que c'est qu'il faut rien s'interdire du moment que. Que, 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 enfin, qu'on œuvre dans le bon sens, c'est-à-dire euh, en lien avec l'environnement, en lien avec le, 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 l'épanouissement. Je crois que ça, c'est la confiance, le mot-clé. S'il y en a un à retenir, c'est celui-là. Faut faire confiance. confiance. Everything is possible. This is, I think, a good conclusion. Thank you very much. And I uh, join us to the conclusion scene. We are, uh, give, uh, give us, give to the audience all the kind of uh, short, uh, arguments of what we said. Thank you very much. And uh, let's join us on the new scene for the end. Okay. Bye-bye.